Hey friends, and welcome in to A Walk Through the Word, Daily Bread with Crystal Fry. I am your host, Crystal Fry, and today we are talking about a passage that I was inspired to speak about as a result of an upcoming guest episode. In John 14, 1 through 4, Jesus comforts his disciples by telling them he is leaving to prepare a place for them, and he will return to take them to this place. Likewise, there is also a place prepared for you and me. Thank you for being here with me today, and I pray that you will listen with an open heart to hear the Word of God speaking to you. All right, friends, let's dive in. God's Word is powerful. The missing link is our identity in Christ. When we know who we are and who He created us to be, that is when we can truly walk in freedom. You are never alone. There is hope, and that hope is Jesus Christ. Today we're looking at John chapter 14 verses 1 through 4 in which Jesus comforts his disciples by saying, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. This passage of scripture came up during my conversation with Pastor Jacoby Pratt for a special Father's Day guest episode, and he gave me a new perspective on the message in these verses, and it was quite profound for me. We'll get into that in just a few minutes, but I want to start with the more traditional interpretation of this passage of Scripture. This conversation Jesus is having with his disciples takes place not long before Jesus is arrested. He has predicted his impending death. He has washed his disciples' feet. He has predicted his betrayal by one who is among them and told Peter that he will deny knowing Jesus three times before the rooster crows. I feel like they may have understandably been in need of a little comfort after hearing all that. So he tells them, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Essentially, he's telling them, Don't worry. Trust me. Everything is going to be okay. As he speaks of his father's house and the many rooms or dwelling places therein, we interpret this as a description of heaven. Jesus assures the disciples this is true by telling them that if it were not so, he would have told them. Jesus tells the disciples he is going there to prepare a place for them, and because he is preparing a place for them, he will come back to get them and take them there to be with him. This is often interpreted as a reference to the rapture. But then Jesus tells them that they know the way to the place he is going. If the place he is going is heaven, then Jesus is the way to get there. He is the bridge that connects our human lives to our promised eternity with God, when we receive the gift of salvation. And he is the only way to reach our heavenly destination. This passage should bring us, as believers, a great deal of comfort in knowing that Jesus has gone to prepare a place for you and for me in heaven, and that he will return to take us there to be with him and the Father. It also serves as a great reminder that this earth is not our home. It's not our final destination. I love this passage for the comfort it brings in its traditional interpretation. But as I stated earlier, 
I've recently been given a new, or shall we say an additional perspective on these four verses, and I'd like to share that with you today. As Pastor Pratt and I talked about faith and fatherhood and how each has impacted the other in his life, this particular passage of scripture came up. He told me this passage was one that he had been meditating on recently, and what was revealed to him had more to do with his lifetime here on earth than the place prepared for him when this life is over. Now, be sure to tune in on Father's Day, which is Sunday, June 19th, to hear Pastor Pratt describe it in his own words, but here's the idea. If God has given you a dream, a vision, that you know is from Him, if you can clearly see it or if you can clearly envision the end result, but perhaps you've been delayed, maybe it's taking longer than you thought or you think it's too late because of where you are at this current stage in your life, take heart. If it was given to you by God, then He is preparing that place for you And if he is preparing that place for you, then he will come back to get you and take you to that place. So don't allow worry, doubt, or fear to creep in and try to take hold of your vision. You know the way to get there. And that way is to trust God to bring his promise to fruition. This had such an impact on me, and honestly, it was exactly what I needed to hear, and maybe it's exactly what you need to hear right now, too. So many of us give up on our opportunities to really be used by God because we have to wait longer than we want for the timing to be right, for it to come in God's perfect timing. I think the words Jesus uses here are another point that we should pay really close attention to. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. My friend, we may not have control over much in this life, but we absolutely do have control over our thoughts and our actions. We can let our hearts be troubled by worrying about things that are out of our control, by trying to force things to happen when we get impatient, by giving up instead of being patient and trusting God, allowing him to work in us and through us for his glory. Or, We can keep our focus on the promise he has given to us and look for ways to be a blessing to others while we wait for our blessing to come. My friend, if you happen to be in a season of waiting right now, know that I am sending you love and compassion and understanding. I too am waiting. And sometimes waiting is really hard. But what I'm learning is that we don't have to be stagnant in the waiting. If we shift our perspective to view this waiting as a time of preparation and begin to ask God questions like, how can I wait well during this time? Or who can I serve while I am waiting? Or better yet, Lord, what do you want to show me during this time of preparation? Then our waiting can have meaning and purpose as well. I want to close today's episode by reading the amplified version of verse 1. As I read these words, I pray that you will hear the heart of Jesus and feel the presence of the Holy Spirit who is here to comfort and guide us. Do not let your hearts be troubled, distressed, agitated. You believe in and adhere to 
and trust in and rely on God, believe in and adhere to and trust in and rely also on me. Thank you, friend, for being here with me today for a new perspective on the place prepared for you. I'd love to know your thoughts on today's episode and what this passage means to you, so leave me a comment and let me know. In our next episode, we're going to take a look at James chapter 1, verses 2 through 5, and the important work of perseverance. Until then! Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's my pleasure as always to be here with you. If what you listened to today resonated with you, if you enjoyed listening to the show, do me a favor, go ahead and like and subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Those reviews are so helpful. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate each and every single one of them. And go ahead and share this episode out with a friend. Invite them along for a walk through the word and let's enjoy that daily bread together. See you tomorrow.